your fitness business podcast snapshot. Insights into fitness marketing, sales, and managing teams. Jason shares a great tip for hiring new employees, and we chat about his role as the current chair of URSA. All of that and more coming up in today's show. You're listening to the industry's leading fitness business podcast for owners and managers. Each week, we invite business experts, coaches, authors, and operators from around the world to share their expert advice with you, the FBP family. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, Tribe Team Training, the world-class leaders in small group training experiences. Earn unprecedented profit, gain guaranteed results for your members, and ensure the very best small group training education for your coaches. Contact Tribe Team Training today and have a conversation to see just how much opportunity there is at your fitness facility. Go to tribeteamtraining.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Welcome along and thank you all so much for joining me today. My special guest this week is the owner of Go Mad Fitness, Jason Reinhardt. Go Mad Fitness was born from Jason's passion for exercise and his commitment to helping others improve the quality of their lives. He has served for over 15 years as a multi-club leader. He was elected to serve a four-year term on the board of directors of Ursa in 2016, and as of July 2019, he now serves as the chair of Ursa. I have flipped today's episode on its head just a little bit because this week, we're actually going to start with the pre-core quick five five. We then chat about three industry trends. Jason shares some key insights and case studies from his business, and we finish off with a glimpse into his role as the Ursa chair. We're about to transition to this week's interview, but first, here's a message from our friends at Tribe Team Training. Tribe Team Training is a proven turnkey standalone profit center for your fitness business. Find out more at tribeteamtraining.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Team, before we dive into my interview with Jason, I first want to tell you about a very important event that is coming up in early 2020. On Thursday, March the 19th, 2020, you will have the opportunity to join friends and colleagues at the annual FBP Family Meetup at URSA 2020. Starting from the Marriott Marquis San Diego Marina at 6.30 a.m., we walk and talk for 45 minutes, sharing experience, ideas, and stories. Everyone from the FBP family is invited, and we would love for you to join us on the day. For full details, listen in after the main interview. Enjoy this week's interview with my special guest, Jason Reinhardt. I am super excited to say a very warm welcome, Jason. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. This is just fantastic because we are recording on video today, so we're going to release this one as a video and also as our weekly audio show. And just like we do every single week, we're going to kick things off with the pre-core quick fire five. So tell us, why do you do what you do? Well, first and foremost, to be a role model for my two boys. You know, I, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to have two boys, 10 and 8 now. And 10 years ago, I worked for good old corporate America and Unfortunately, I didn't spend a lot of time at home because I was working a lot. And so I uh, decided to try to be dad of the year instead of employee of the year. Started my great company six and a half years ago. And now I'm, uh, you know, coaching and haven't missed a field trip. And of course, work a lot and put a lot into it. But in summary, it's to just truly make a difference every day through health and fitness, but also as a dad and a spouse. That is a great reason to do what you do. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? Well, of course, attend the URSA convention every March. Uh, that's, a, that's a must. But, but I think, you know, a lot of people get set in, in kind of what got you here won't get you there. So always being proactive and, and, and reaching out or searching out things that will get me to the next level and not being complacent or satisfied. So it's, it's one of those things that it rarely comes to you. So you got to seek it out. And so I kind of pride myself on that weekly activity of, of looking, researching uh, of things that will add value to me and what I bring to the table. 
And are there any apps or systems that you use to stay in control of your workload? And I'm, I'm Mr. Simple, so I still use just a simple calendar on my phone, and it works just fine. So, <laughs> Hey, there is nothing wrong with that. I always tell everyone that I am addicted to my whiteboards, and all I do is like do my, my whiteboards, rub it out, that's it. Simple that's as right. I love that. <laughs> and um, tell us, are there any books, podcasts, or blogs that you would recommend and why? You know, there was a, a CD set that, uh, well, now it's audio, but Marshall Goodsmith, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And I know I've already referenced it today. And then a second one would be Difference Makers by John Maxwell. And I just think it's all about attitude and the way you wake up to the day and, and, and seek out the challenges that'll make you better and push easy aside. And, and you know, those two, uh, you know, audios and books have really impacted my life. Um, and so I always refer the two of those for sure. They're great recommendations, Jason. Thank you so much. And we normally finish off our pre-call quick five five talking about the main interview topic, but rather than hand the mic over to you, I'm going to just give everyone a really brief overview because today uh, Jason is joining us to do our talking trends interview. So each month you guys will be getting used to us having a special guest join us on the show and we cover off some key trends that are happening in the fitness industry. So Jason's going to share some of his insights and some of his predictions around three key areas. So tell us about what your thoughts are, your trends, predictions in the area of marketing in the fitness industry. You know, it's interesting to having done this for over 20 years, everybody's looking for the, uh, the new trifold or the shiny color or the new color. And, you know, it just goes back to the simplicity of why people even think about starting in a health club. You know, in my opinion, the three steps to getting started are, is one, think about it. Uh, two, walk through our doors, which is the hardest part of someone's decision making process. And three is just to get committed on a fitness program. The exciting part about our industry and slash marketing is how do we get people to do step two? And that's to walk through our doors. You know, how many times do they drive by our clubs? How many times do they think about coming? How many times do they see something that prompts a thought that, you know, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired or, or you know what, it, today's the day, but they still don't come park in our parking lot, walk through our doors and have a conversation with us. And so I think if we keep it simple and remember also on the reverse end of that, of why people leave is that in my opinion, one, they get bored. Two, they're overwhelmed with what we have and they're just simply not sure of what to, to do or where to even start with. And then three, they just simply stop seeing results. So in marketing in general, in my opinion, is that if we take step two on, why, on the process of getting started, which is the hardest part to walk through our doors, how, how can we do that effectively? And then, th you know, two is we got to think of the reasons why people typically leave us once they do walk through our doors. And if we can prevent boredom, if we can prevent them being overwhelmed and, and make sure that we jumpstart their programs or help them on board. And then, and then three to assure that we have ongoing programs down the road that uh, make sure that they don't stop seeing results. I think our marketing campaign start to finish. And, and when I, what I mean by finish is the referral process, you know, it, it's one thing to get people started, but then what is it that we're doing down the road, 30, 60, 90 days, six months, one year to continue the activity, the energy, the enthusiasm of, of when they started to then refer us. And so that, you know, that's a kind of a general blanket statement when it comes to marketing. But I think sometimes we just throw out the shiny penny without really understanding the starting process and the potential three top reasons why people leave us. And if we combine all of that into our marketing strategy, I think it would be more effective and then, and then long term. Jason, as the owner of Go Mad Fitness, and I just found out this morning that MAD stands for Make a Difference. Right. That's it. That's awesome. I love that when I read that oh, this morning. You. So as the owner of the business, I would love for you to share with us maybe an example or a case study of a marketing campaign that you have done uh, at any time over the years that has been a driver for you that has gotten those people into the door. Can you share one of those with us? Absolutely. I think in our in our world and in industry, we throw around the four letter F word free quite often. <laughs> and so, uh, I, you know, I, I tend to have, uh, you know, so instead of saying free pass or free workout, uh, we use the word gift certificate because everything has a value. And so instead of 
um, a, a free pass, we use a gift certificate because our day fee is a $10 value, for example. Our enrollment fee that we typically waive instead of saying free, we, uh, we tell them that it's worth something. So, you know, I think the, what's worked for us in the past and is inviting people in to pick up a gift certificate instead of a free pass because what's, what's truly a, a loss if they don't show up or if they don't use it? Nothing because it was free in the first place. So I challenge our listeners out there to, to stop using the four-letter F word and to put value in behind what they believe. That is such a great example. And I think you're right. I do think that we throw that word around far too often. And just from a practical point of view, do you print out your gift certificates? Do you have digital certificates? What's the actual application of that? Personally, a little bit of everything. And I think anybody can do it in multiple facets. But, you know, at the end of the day, instead of free pass, we we do put gift certificates. So on stuff that we leave around town in our community, things that we send out via email, things that we send out via text message, it's always attached with a gift certificate. And they're both the same thing, right? But at the end of the day, uh, I think it's what engages the customer, what engages the community, therefore having them act and do step two and to come through our doors. You know what, I think any of our personal trainers that are listening out there at the moment know exactly what you're talking about, the difference between someone showing up to a session that they understand the value that you're putting on that session versus someone who just all of a sudden cancels at the last minute because they had a free session. So really great example. Thank you for that, Jason. So the next topic that we're going to be focusing on today is sales. So any thoughts in this particular area, what you might see is coming up in the future of sales for the fitness industry or any experience that you can share with us in this area? You know, again, I'm very simple. And so I understand technology is taking over and I understand the the word that we're using today is trends, but I think it comes down to leads, traffic and closing slash conversion. So I think everything in our world starts with a name and number. And And I know it sounds too simple, but if we're not, you know, piggybacking on the marketing topic, if we're not generating fresh leads, you know, I always like to say, I think a lot of companies rotate ball tires. I think a lot of people, you know, take a lead from six months ago and then try to bring it to life today, which is fine. And it's part of the process, but, but it's about fresh, new uh, community events and leads. And once we get a lead, we then can make an invite. Once you make an invite, you can create guest traffic going back to again, number two, getting people through the door. And once we make an invite and get people to show up, then we have an opportunity to build value, uh, listen to their why, create a solution, and then uh, ask them to join our our fitness family. Once we do that, we, we then hopefully earn an opportunity to ask for a referral. So I would like to think it's simple, but yet effective that you generate a lead, you ask them to stop in for a tour and a packet of information. You then uh, show them the facility based on their why, create a few solutions, and then ask them to join. If they do so or if they don't, they, there's still a call to action. If they join, they hopefully are excited to then refer. If they don't join for whatever reason, there's still a call to action of what the next step would be. So, you know, what's the next steps? When will you make your decision? What are you basing your decision on? And then set that appointment before they leave. We let so many people walk out of the door saying, let me know what you think. And then, you know, no one, no one typically comes back. And so, uh, you know, I'm still a believer leads, uh, traffic and closing. If you measure those three key metrics, hopefully two of the three are, are doing well. Um, and then you can really focus and hone in on how to fix or to how to, how to, to get one better. But if two of the three or even all three are not doing well, then you should stop, drop and roll call 911 and have fun. So Jason, just like I was asking you before to kind of tap into your pool of examples from Go Mad Fitness, I'd love to know about any specific sales promotions that you might have done in the business that have been really successful for you. You know, again, going back to simple, right? So I think there's a few times a year that you can use key phrases that you can only use at that time of the year. For example, in August, you know, to say rest of the summer free, uh, you're really not getting too much free, but it's a, it's a, it's a tagline that uh, a lot of people haven't heard. Uh, we have one coming up actually that, uh, you know, rest of the year free. So we do it at the end of November, Black Friday, we kick it off and we waive the enrollment fee and we, we promote that the rest of the year is free, no payment till January. A lot of people are giving to to others, buying for others. And in that time of season where they're saving for themselves and buying and giving to others, we offset that and say, listen, rest of the year free, no payment till January, but still take care of yourself while giving to so many others. 
you know what, I've actually seen that same offer work here in a, in a club in Sydney and it's something about the language and the mindset that you all of a sudden when you're thinking about, oh, until next year, it feels like incredible value for that prospect that's coming into our facility. Correct. Okay, that is great. Thank you for diving into that specific example with us, Jason. So we're going to move on to topic number three, which is managing teams. So what are your thoughts around this area? You know, listen, you can't give a cure for cancer to some people that don't want it. (laughs) And what I mean by that is that I think at the end of the day, people with enthusiasm have a chance to be successful. And I believe those are one of the things that you can't teach. You know, it's like the simplicity of a smile. You can't teach people when and when not to smile or when and when not to have energy or when and when not to be friendly. And I think so many people look or get caught up in a resume uh, or an interview and not truly understand if the person has energy or enthusiasm or passion for our industry or even care about fitness themselves. And I think such a key ingredient to even have a chance to manage them or to uphold our standards or to build a culture with people that potentially don't even, they don't believe in what we do or how we do. And so I think uh, it's interesting to me when I meet people around the country and, uh, and find out their past or what their beliefs are. And, and they're, it's just, it's unfortunate that so many people don't understand that we're in the industry with the best energy in the world. It really is amazing. And so I think it, it's, the, it's the basic fundamental principle when you hire staff at any, listen, leadership by action, not by title. And so when you bring someone on, they, the key ingredients is enthusiasm for our business and what we do, and it'll, it'll come across to your members and other staff, you got to be contagious. You're not there for robotics, uh, you know, at the front desk. So, I couldn't agree more. And so, when you are in that hiring process, which I think this can be a little bit of a challenge to some people, and that is, how do you identify that someone has that natural energy? And I know that with some people, it does come across, but. In an interview process, people can get nervous. They're not necessarily themselves. Have you found any particular ways that you can really identify that that person is going to be the right fit for your team and the right fit for your business? Is there anything that you do specifically in an interview process when you're bringing on new team members? I do, and I'll, and I'll share that with you. And first, I just want them to get me excited about the job rather than vice versa. And I think a lot of us always... Uh, try to get the ones that are sitting in front of us for the position excited about it, which should be the opposite. And then I always let the individual set up their second interview with something that's critical to our success. So I'll give them an important front desk script, or I'll give them something that's important once again to us and our business. And I say, listen, this is critical to our success. Once you master it and have it memorized and can role play it with me, you call me and schedule your second interview. And once we do that, so here's what happens if they say well what time are you here till today I actually hired them on the spot because they just showed me that they're a good listener they understand that I said it's critical to our success and I know that that's their learning curve or the way that they'll approach everything moving forward with me if they call me within a day or two I'll go through the second interview I have a 72 hour rule though if they call me three days or later they won't get a second interview with me because they show me by their actions that what I told them is critical to our success is not that important to them. And it's something simple. It's like a one paragraph script. So it's nothing like a book or a manual. And so again, that has weeded out probably and saved me a lot of headaches down the road, but those that are prompt or call me that day or next day, that's the way they approach our business and and everything else I'll throw at them. I love that way of interviewing and I haven't heard that approach of making them take the opportunity to actually make that next interview time and what a great way to do things. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jason. I'm about to chat to Jason about his role as the chair of URSA. Before we take a listen, I first want to mention that the Fitness Business Podcast have had the opportunity to interview the past four chairs of URSA. 
Rasmus Ingerslev in 2016, Derek Gallup in 2017, Jim Worthington in 2018, and now Jason Reinhardt in 2019. So for anyone that would like to go back and listen to any of those episodes, I've attached a special section in today's show notes with each of those interviews. Just go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and scroll down below today's episode timeline to access the links. Jason, I wanted to move on to our final topic for today and have a bit of a chat about Ursa and what's coming up on the agenda for the next 12 months ahead. But first and foremost, congratulations on your appointment as the chair of Ursa. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now, 12 months ago, I had the opportunity to speak to Jim Worthington, the the previous chair, and Jim mentioned that a lot of what his focus was, was on completing tasks that had already existed, that they'd already uh, identified were important for URSA. And you know, taking, following out those tasks or, or, or completing those tasks. So tell us, what does the agenda look like for you over the next 12 months? Well, I appreciate the, the nice words and thank you. It's a huge honor and I uh, accept the responsibility and understand the responsibility. But, you know, it's like Jim said, and then even prior to him, Derek Gallup, it, you know, I'm here to be the messenger for the URSA board and more importantly, the URSA staff, not to come in and you know, reinvent the wheel and, and, and come to the table with Jason's goals. It's, it's Ursa's goals for its members. And I'm, I'm honored to be the spokesperson and, and also lead the team, right? We have an amazing board from, from folks around the world, and it's a, it's a huge honor to be their team captain. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're fighting the inactivity and obesity epidemic in the world. And, you know, our goal that was set a couple of years ago to have 230 million uh, global health club members slash users by 2030 is still our main main goal and and we're on pace to exceed that so i'm excited to you know continue carrying the flag and continue through our international committee and the efforts uh, abroad to to continue adding folks uh, from around the world um, and then you know another big thing is is the the ursa advocacy so you know the fit bill is hot and heavy and you know what a great thing where people can set aside pre-tax dollars for uh, fitness equipment, gym memberships, uh, youth sports league fees. And as a dad, I can appreciate that as well. And so, you know, Jim Worthington has been our flag holder for that. The URSA board, the URSA staff, our public policy committee is is driving that on a weekly basis. And so uh, there's there's a lot of uh, good things happening uh, behind the scenes that our URSA members probably don't hear and see. Uh, that I would like to to recognize and let let them know that that we're fighting the fight. You know, we say the tsunami's coming with the legislation and you know uh, uh, issues concerning the industry, and and we're here to to help and and support and and to protect. I'm so glad that you brought up the fit bill because I haven't spoken to to Jim or any of the team in a little while in rela- in relation to that. Where is the progress at? Like, what steps are next in order for that bill to pass? You know, in, in, in my sports background, I'll, I'll use the analogy of that we're in the fourth quarter and that, our you know, our lobbyists are, are in Washington, D.C. on a monthly basis. We have weekly conference calls every Wednesday to get an update from our lobbyists and, um, you know, public policy committee. And so, you know, I don't want to uh, say that we're close, but I don't want to say that we're far away either. We're, we're in the game. We're playing the game and uh, we're excited about what could happen. Thank you for the update, Jason. And I'd also love to just hear what Jason is up to. So give us a little bit of an insight. I mean, as your as your role as the chair of URSA, but also what are you up to from, are you presenting? Are you doing any industry conferences? Where in the world will we see you? Well, thank you for asking. I'm, I'm excited about where we are and I'm excited about where we're going as an industry. Uh, I have the uh, pleasure of going next week to uh, our European Congress in Dublin, Ireland. I'll be presenting there and, and walking around with some URSA staff and, and just celebrating uh, some, some industry wins over there and, and uh, from around the world. And then China fits a potential opportunity in December. And then uh, as far as registration goes for our URSA convention in March, it's, it's on pace for another record setting year. We're in our larger trade show space that we were in two years ago. Registration is up from where we were last year at this time. And it's once again uh, on pace to be the largest uh, trade show ever. So I'm excited about that. 
That is quite a busy schedule that you've got coming up. And I've got to say, I am personally excited because I know that I'm going to be seeing some of the team from URSA at the URSA Women's Leadership Summit that's coming up at the Athletic Business Show in November of this year. Uh, And you've got an amazing keynote speaker. And I just happen to have her book right here in front of me. So I'm really excited to see Debbie Peterson speak at the URSA Women's Leadership Summit that is happening in November. So what we're going to do is put all of the details for all of those events that we've just chatted about in today's show notes so that everyone can check them out. And if you happen to be in those areas, then uh, then we'd absolutely love you to join us. So Jason, thank you for taking the time. I'm so excited that we finally got to get you on the show and, uh, and I'm really thrilled for your position as chair of URSA. And thank you for just taking the opportunity to join us today and to give us some of your insights around industry trends. Thank you for your time. Keep making a difference. It's an honor to be on your show. Thank you once again to Jason. Now here is a message from our podcast partner, MyZone. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification, and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, go to myzone.org. Precore Quickfire 5. Next week's special guest is the president and CEO of Gold's Gym, Adam Zaitsev, and I'll be recording my interview with Adam in just a few days' time. So in the meantime, Adam was kind enough to send me through his answers to the pre-call quickfire five questions in advance. So this week, I'm going to share those with you, and then next week, Adam will be joining us to chat about the secrets to building a strong team. So let's dive into the pre-call quick fire five. And first things first, in answer to the question, why do you do what you do? Adam said, helping people is what brings me the most joy in my life. And that's why I'm so drawn to the fitness industry. My role at Gold's Gym revolves around our mission to help people achieve their potential through fitness. Being able to combine my passion of helping people alongside my entrepreneurial background enables me to drive continued innovation and growth on behalf of this iconic brand. And because of this, I can't imagine a better job for me than the one that I currently have with Gold's Gym. And the one ritual that helps him become better at what he does... He said, every Sunday, I send an email out to our support center and company-owned gym team members, which I call Sunday Night Thoughts. In the message, I delve into a little bit of everything from personal anecdotes to recaps of exciting news from across our global network. It's another way to connect with the teams and drive home why we do what we do. It's also intended to keep us all motivated and excited while keeping the lines of communication open. In answer to the question, what app or system does he use to stay in control of his workload? Adam said, I use my Outlook on my iPhone to manage my work calendar, tasks, and communications. And I use Evernote on my iPhone and my desktop to manage all aspects of my note-taking and information gathering. Now, Adam didn't have one specific book, podcast, or blog that he would recommend. So needless to say, I'm going to have to get the Fitness Business Podcast to be his answer next time that question comes up. And of course, last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, our focus for next week is building a strong team. But more specifically, Adam refers to his six and a half thousand plus team as the Gold's Gym family. So we chat about that term, about how he shows his team that he cares. We discuss how to foster collaboration within a business across multiple locations and much, much more. I'm absolutely thrilled that Adam will be joining us on the show and I cannot wait to share that interview with you all next week. Over the last two weeks, you may have heard our new Rewind segment. Sometimes I forget just how amazing our back library is. So each week from today onwards, you'll hear me recommend a past show that I think is awesome and worth going back and listening to again. So when you hear this sound, (laughs) that means listen in because I'm about to share something from the FBP library. Over to you, Harper. Okay, so this week's Rewind show is episode 171, Ignite the Customer Experience in Your Fitness Business with special guest Amanda Stevens. During that show, you will learn the difference between a customer and an advocate. 
how a customer advisory board can help you get great insights on your business. We chat about the role of technology for customer experience, and Amanda leaves us with three ways to immediately improve the customer experience in your business. If you missed that episode, then rewind and check out today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and in the search field, type 171. Happy listening. You heard it at the start of the show, so here are the details you've been waiting for. You are all invited to the FBP Family Meetup on Thursday, March the 19th, 2020 at 6.30 a.m. If you aren't familiar with our Meetup Walks, this is an active networking event. We walk and we talk for 45 minutes and we return back to the main entrance at the Marriott Marquis San Diego Marina by 7.15 a.m. The Meetup is free and it is an awesome way to start your day. We need to know attendance numbers so please just jump over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, go to the top of the page and click on the tab called Meetup, then register your details for the Ursa Walk. And if you need any further information, just shoot me through an email at chantal at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you all for joining me for this week's show. And a reminder that all the resources and the links that we've discussed for today's episode can all be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. Active Management are a fitness business coaching company that help clients all over the world. And this month, I have a business tip for you all. Join the Active Management Facebook community. It's an amazing group and you'll meet like-minded fitness owners and managers from all over the world. All you need to do is go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash active management community. It's a highly engaging community where JT from Active Management shares loads of resources, things like photos from inside gyms, reasons to exercise, a monthly book club, challenges, and even ideas under 50 bucks. It's free and it is an awesome community. Once again, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash active management community. Thank you once again all for joining me today. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others.